All right, time for more Shannon Reads Those Books with Roughing It in the Bush. Hey everyone, it is Shannon. I'm really excited to share the 16th book that I have finished as part of the Those Books Exploration, but it was actually the first one that I started. It took a while. <laughs> It took a while. It was worth it, but it took a while. Okay, so we are talking about Roughing It in the Bush. This is by Susanna Moody. Oh, it has a subtitle, Roughing It in the Bush or Life in Canada by Susanna Moody. It was written in 1852 and it's set during the 1830s. This is actually a non-fiction book. Um, it makes the those books list for being the first in the Canadian classic Canadian novels list, although it is non-fiction. It is actually what she was trying to do was write realistically about life what life was like in Canada so that it could be sent back to people in England so that they could basically make an informed decision on whether or not that they were going to immigrate. I guess she felt that the um, how it was presented that life would be was very different than how life was and how hard it was to be here especially in the winters uh, wasn't very well represented so it, ironically it sounded like from the afterwards um, that that's not it, it didn't end up being so much the case um, and actually it was kind of it's kind of heartbreaking that it wasn't that well received uh, because locally, more locally distributed people felt like she was really um, giving Canada a bit of bad rap. <laughs> but she was just being honest. So this one is, it's it was very interesting. And I, I'm actually, I'm quite embarrassed that it took me this long to read. But it is very dense. It's like 400 pages. And it's, you know, it was written in 18... 50 probably the through the 40s through the 30s and 40s and then published in 52 so the language is very you know not everyday language for now although there is a fair amount of dialogue which is its own ball of wax because anytime someone had an accent she would write uh as how it sounded so sometimes that was really hard to understand so and it is kind of dry <laughs> i won't deny that but i did actually really enjoy it coming into it but then i got a bit felt a bit sloggy like it just felt like um it was hard to get through and uh, because it is honestly a lot of the things that happened were really hard you know like the winters were long and there was long periods of time where they didn't have help and they didn't they had to suffer through whether it was the winter or the hot summers or like you know not having enough food or you know there's so many or other people imposing their uh to be guests or being under or not living in their house yet someone else was living in the house that was promised to them there were lots of big challenges that they had to go through in those early years clearing the land uh you know what happened if the crops didn't do well the fact that they're not farmers and whether or not that they would you know do farm work you know or not learning how to cook like there were just so many things and it's sort of like everyday things but it's just the weight of it for me that was part of the challenge of reading was the weight of it um and the reality of it because it is nonfiction. this is what happened these are the tragedies that occurred or just the everyday occurrences that occurred that were hard there wasn't that much joy there was some you know lighter stories happier stories but a lot of it was hard, but that's what she was trying to get across is that it was hard, you know, like, so that was, you know, <laughs> kind of crazy. So, but one of the, there are lots of things that I also did enjoy about it. One thing is mostly it's set in Ontario. So for me, that's really cool because I live in Ontario. And so it's kind of cool to see, wow, she could have lived just a couple of hours from here. And what would that have been like, you know, and um, although she tells you what that would be like, you know, um, it was also cool to read basically sort of like a memoir of a woman living at that time, like uh, women writers in 1852, how many were there? Like, that's pretty awesome. And to know that this is one of the sort of you know, cherished works of uh, Canadian books. Like, that's that's pretty awesome. Like, all of that is really awesome. Um, I was also really happy that, you know, just to see a different, um, like, mostly just to read something that was iconically Canadian. I just, I, 
it felt important. I don't always enjoy the experience of reading things that are important, but in this case, I mostly did. And I think actually taking a break from reading what when I started to coming back to it more recently was a good thing because it was written, you know, 150, 160 years ago. Uh, at the time when I started this exploration, you know, I, I was reading a lot easier books. And since then, I have written a lot. I've read a lot more challenging books. And so I'm more comfortable and understand more language from different time periods. So I think that really helped and that really made a difference. Um, I do, I, you know, but it does still sort of like oh, sit with me that it was such a, a long haul. I think it's a long time that a book took me more than a year to read. And I did come back to it here and there, but I mostly sort of started it read it a bit and then read it and then started more concentrated effort to read it more recently. Um, but, you know, the there was the challenge of, of, of the hardships that they went through. I did enjoy a lot of the stories. I did actually enjoy it. One of the things that was nice was that she was very, and you never know with older books how this is going to play out for me being very, um, I feel very, uh, it's very important to treat everyone equally. So you never know how accepting people are gonna be of other kinds of people at different times, not kinds of people, other, you know, other people, like, you know, people that they don't know or, or what, you know, those kinds of things. And so she was very accepting of other cultures and that was really, really great. Although there was a couple of stories, um, especially of a sort of a razzing, hazing tradition <laughs> that was very very scary um that I that was just shocked to to read to be honest but that was like one story of many many stories um wh one of the other challenges I found with the book was that um I didn't always remember who people were and they had lots of different people who helped them who were employed by them through the years and I didn't it didn't stick with me from story to story who was who. And um, some people they really felt very strongly about and really connected with their children and other people, I was just like, I don't even know who that is. Like, so uh, that was hard because it was just, there wasn't a lot of transition because it's not a novel. It's just, you know, it, um, this moment and that moment and this story and that story. So sometimes the sort of secondary characters, you know, characters, people in their lives, I didn't always remember who they were from story to story, especially if they hadn't spoken about them for a while, or perhaps this is the first time they came up. And, and I was, I felt a bit lost at that. So yeah, so <laughs> that was a little like, ah, so, but overall, I was I'm very happy that I read it. I'm very happy that I finished it. I feel very proudly Canadian uh, to have read it. Um, and and uh, I am just like, woohoo, <laughs> from that perspective. If you are interested in reading it, if you are interested in Canadian works, it's definitely one to read. Um, and it is public domain, so it is available for free. Uh, Amazon.ca so has a Kindle version, which is the one that primarily I read. I did also read a Kobo version, I think it's, which means it would be up on Project Gutenberg somewhere. So there you go, roughing it in the bush. Whew, it was a bit of a rough haul, but it was really, really worth it. So yay, another one down. Woohoo! Got to get back to it. I have, I have, I have to pick my next Canadian. How do I pick my next Canadian? Hmm. How do I do what next? What Canadian book I will read next? We'll find out. All right. Thanks for watching.